recording. Okay, super. So we are now recording. Um, again, guys, thank you so much, and um, thank you for your patience in working through the technology issues. Uh, they seem to always occur, um, but uh, obviously I'm glad that we're all on the same call. Um, today I'm going to be going through a Selenese stump training um, for a specific position that uh, Eugenie had given me, and that was a customer account support uh, position, In uh, and the person would also need to understand and be able to speak German and Italian. The one thing I wasn't quite sure of is whether or not this customer account support would have to know English and German, English and Italian, or English and German and Italian. So I wasn't sure if it's trilingual or bilingual. Would you happen to know, Susanna, if it's trilingual or bilingual? Bi bilingual. English ah. is compulsory and either German or Italian. Okay, perfect. Okay. I actually thought that was the situation, so I developed the training around uh, focusing on, you know, English and German and English and Italian. So um, again, I I do have a fairly robust, um, what do you call that, an escalation tactical sourcing strategy that I can definitely send to all three of you. It's all based on efforts in Budapest. It's probably about two to three years old, maybe maybe two years old, maybe it's not three years old, but mm -hmm. two years old. Um, but a lot of the same techniques that worked two years ago would still work today, uh, including, you know, what schools that actually offer German or Italian or English as a course. Um, and so obviously with this type of position because, you know, I was reading up on the job description, it doesn't look like the person actually needs to truly have a customer service experienced background. They just need to have a customer service um, kind of mindset. Uh, but as long as the, they had the language component, that seemed to be the most important piece of this puzzle. So. Um, when I put together a stump training, I always focus my trainings on 13 steps. And this is steps that you can use regardless if in your sourcing in Hungary, France, um, Italy, Japan, China, uh, in, in the United States. It's the same plan that um, my sourcing team actually uses. And it works. Um, and so sometimes some of the steps work while some of the other steps don't work. Uh, but at least these are the 13 steps that everybody should follow when they actually start sourcing for an opportunity. Um, and obviously, the, and I'll send you all of this information after the call is over, but I just wanted to make sure that we went through all 13 steps. So, um, you know, at a high level, you know, what we're going to do is read the requisition, highlight keywords and key terms. That's a given. You obviously need to read the job description to understand what you're looking for. Um, step two is you know listing those keywords and key phrases, identifying zip codes, area codes, postal codes, uh, locations near the hiring city, um, similar titles, and then wiki anything that you're not familiar with. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms in the world, and so uh, half the time I'm looking up different acronyms, and some acronyms mean something for one industry that looks something completely different in another industry. And obviously, you know, finally, we would want to also identify competitors. Um, you know, the keywords and key phrases are going to be really key, <laughs> no pun in intended, to ensure that we create the correct Boolean strings later on. And then um, step three would always be, you know, go through your applicant tracking system, the old and new requisitions. Um, step four is always go through the CRM tool, um, look in jobs, look in people. And by the way, you know, this is just high level. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty soon. So I just wanted to kind of go through these steps first. Um, and then obviously from step four, you know, we are building out our Boolean strings to do people searches. Um, and then obviously um, for the CRM tool, Aviture does have our passcodes to be able to search CV databases. So we want to be able to search anything that we have available to us. I know uh, Monster has, we have a Monster account for Selenese um, in uh, EMEA. Uh, so, you know, we could definitely search Monster EMEA to uncover any additional um, uh, resumes or CVs. 
And then, of course, you know, everybody should have a free LinkedIn account. That's your own personal account. Uh, for some of us, we do have the recruiter account, and, you know, obviously we want to make sure that we're, you know, reviewing um, the folks in LinkedIn. If you don't have a recruiter account, you know, there are ways to search LinkedIn um, in a free fashion, and that's through uh, doing a, uh, a site search or a x-ray of, of LinkedIn. And we have a couple of really cool tools that um, Sourcing Science likes to use, uh, the Google search engine, um, as well as Recruiting.net. It's just a really cool tool that, you know, allows us to do our Boolean searches specifically on LinkedIn and other, um, you know, other uh, candidate portals in which we can uncover additional CVs and resumes. Um, and then, you know, when all else fa fails, and then we can always use our Boolean on Google. Step nine, we're always looking at associations and organizations for this particular role. I would also include search schools. Um, so any school in the Budapest area that focuses on Italian, German, English uh, speaking languages, definitely you know include those schools in your um, searches. And then you know finally we have social, so we can search Twitter. There's a cool tool called FollowerWonk.com um, in which you can actually, um, in a free way, uh, search for bios and profiles on Twitter. Searching Facebook, I know a lot of folks use Facebook on a personal note, but I do know that there is a trend in using Facebook for professional usage as well. And maybe you might not feel comfortable reaching out to someone on Facebook, you know, through your own account, um, but at least it can uncover additional names, additional titles, and additional companies that these people reside at, and you can reach out to them, you know, on their, um, on their job. And then step 12, you know, searching user groups, meetups, LinkedIn groups, conference websites, you know, there's a lot of multilingual, multi-international um, um, conferences that happen in the Budapest area. We should definitely, you know, consider looking at some of those conference lists to see who actually attended. It may be a little bit more senior than what we need, but, you know, again, it could provide us additional folks that we can connect with and see if they can give us some referrals. And then finally, um, searching video and presentation sites. So SlideShare, YouTube, Scribe would uh, name a couple. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into, let me go ahead and save that. Oh, wait, let me just reduce it. So what I did here is I created a stump document, and this goes through every 13 steps that I just went through. <clears throat> so again, we start with step one. You know, read the requisition and highlight the key words. Um, for this particular role, it's customer service, entry, records, orders, price changes, billing adjustments. Um, those were the key words that stood out in the uh, job description. And then the, some of the must-haves I, I read were English, German, and Italian. Um, college degree was you know necessary. I was, it was either a bachelor's degree or a master's degree is what I saw in here, and that you know what I did also notice is that new grads were welcome, which means that's great because we don't actually have to you know look for someone that has the experience unless of course you know your hiring manager has actually come to you and said disregard what you see on the job description. I definitely need people with customer service experience which definitely happens from time to time. But, you know, again, I did notice that it said new grads were welcome and that, you know, the f person really needs to have a customer service attitude, which, again, you really can't uh, search attitude on a resume, but maybe you can search, you know, whether or not the person was in a customer support type of role, whether or not it's retail, whether or not it's sales, whether or not it's some sort of, uh, volunteering type of work. I mean, these are all people that have that, you know, customer service or customer first mindset. So we definitely want to consider those individuals. And then um, again, you know, uh, just to reiterate, the English, the the language skills was vital for this particular role. I totally get that. So we read the job description. We, you know, highlighted the keywords. Now we're going to start listing the keywords and key phrases and the postal codes. Um, again, you know, it seems like in Budapest from previous searches, um, you really don't need a postal code. Typically, if you just write down Budapest, Hungary, you're going to find people that can commute to your particular office. 
Um, the, the main thing here is that we want to make sure that we're focusing on in the English and German language or English and Italian language. And then um, what I did was I, you know, identified similar titles and basically what I would do here is just go into LinkedIn and do a quick search on customer service and see who actually shows up in customer service roles in Budapest, Hungary and see what other titles they also hold. So when I did a LinkedIn search for customer service in Budapest, support representative came up, specialist came up, customer success manager. Again, when you see manager, sometimes you may think, oh, it's, it's a manager of people, but in this case, you know, for some of the roles that I saw on LinkedIn, manager was really just managing a process. Um, so it wasn't actually a people manager. Um, coordinator, so customer service coordinator, customer coordinator, representative, sales services, consultant, and service desk. These are all titles that I saw in LinkedIn that would you know, provide us additional titles that we could do some searches. There was nothing on the job description that I didn't understand, so that's why I put a, an NA non-applicable under wiki, any keyword or phrases I truly didn't know. Um, again, you know, we work on so many different roles, you know, within RPO. We don't really know, you know, all, all the op, you know, all the different jobs that are out there and all the different skill sets. So in this case, you know, this role was pretty clear. I didn't have to actually wiki anything, but um, you know, for other uh, jobs and in, in other client teams, I may have had to do some keyword searches. Um, and then, of course, you know, I, at that point, decided to identify competitors. Again, I'm just Googling customer service, um, you know, um, you could do uh, a search on customer service jobs in Budapest. You can look at jobs in LinkedIn, you could look at jobs on Indeed, you could look at jobs in um, profession.hu. I mean, these are, if you're seeing that, you know, there are certain companies that are always advertising customer service roles in the Budapest area, then obviously um, you can go ahead and, um, you know, use those particular companies. Uh, I, yeah, Barbara, I can't hear you at all. I can only hear Susanna, so you're all good. Um, so that's, that's step two. So again, there's a lot of research that I've taken and have worked through before I even started the search. It's really vital to understand exactly what you're looking for before you actually start the search. So now that we know, you know what we're looking for, where we're looking this, for this person, the first thing I would do is go to the applicant tracking system. I personally don't have access to your applicant tracking system, so I couldn't actually do the search myself. But obviously, you guys are in your applicant tracking system morning, noon, and night, I'm sure. So definitely um, you know, look in your applicant tracking system. Look at the old recs with the same title and the same location. Recycle folks that you can. Maybe someone that didn't have enough experience a year ago may have enough experience a year later. So consider those individuals. Maybe someone that didn't pass a background check, you know, six months ago is now eligible again. Um, maybe someone that had, um, you know, had applied but didn't make it to the initial or the hiring manager interview but got past the recruiter interview, consider those people. So always go ahead and recycle the folks that are in your applicant tracking system. Um, also, you know, with this particular position, you know, because the person doesn't necessarily need to have a customer service background, you know, I would also look at jobs in the applicant tracking system that focus on uh, maybe sales or accounts, you know, receivable, uh, collections, um, you know, any, any type of position in which a person is going to get on a call with a customer and talk through a problem. So, you know, always consider some of the old requisitions in the applicant tracking system that focus on that customer contact. So if you still haven't found anybody, you know, through the first step, now we go into the CRM tool. So I'm just going to move this sh uh, sheet over here and we're going to go into um, Aviture. And so the first thing I would do in Aviture is I would search in jobs. So I'm going to log in here. And there's two different ways to do, well, actually there are multiple ways to search um, in Aviture, but I wanted to share with you 
um, three different ways uh, today, but two different ways to search the CRM tool itself, not through web sources. So the first thing I'd want to do is go into advanced search, okay? And this is where I can actually search for anything within the CRM tool. And you can see here it's set up for search everywhere. We don't want to just search everywhere. We want to kind of have a, you know, a, 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 log a logical way to um, attack this position. So the first thing that I would do is, of course, I go the easiest route first. And the easiest route first, again, just like the applicant tracking system, is look in jobs. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just search customer service um, or um, customer account support because again that's the name of your title and I'm going to put parentheses around this I'm assuming you guys do know basic boolean uh, so I'm not going to go through that of course you know let, chat with me if you don't know basic boolean um, we're actually um, and this is kind of an aside but we're having a basic boolean sourcing collaboration training call on October 4th or 5th so um, that training call is going to be hosted through the Talent Acquisition Optimization uh, University site. So if you haven't, um, if you need a brush up on Basic Boolean, uh, definitely register for the training um, on that site. So anyway, um, again, we're, we're ju just searching jobs, customer service, customer account support, and again, we're going to do Budapest because um, Budapest, that's the location that we're looking for. And then we're going to go ahead and put in Italian. Italian. All right. Did, did someone have a question? Susanna, did you have a question? No, no. Okay. okay. All right. So th this is our first search. And again, we're just searching the CRM tool. And we can see here that, you know, there's a variety of different um, jobs. Here's in the customer account position. Again, this is the new one. So mm -hmm. chance to the one that we're already working on. There you are, Susanna. So that's yes. <laughs> um, and it looks like that we had some sourcing assess, uh, assistance requests mm -hmm. for this particular role: Italian, mm -hmm. and French, Italian, and French. Um, here's another one: customer account representative, Italian, and French. This is from July. Here's another customer account representative from August. Um, you know, and again, I would just basically go through, you know, the old jobs mm -hmm. just to see what else is available. Because you might be pleasantly surprised to see, you know, that we could just take old people on older jobs and just match them over to our new position. Um, and then that would definitely help us out with building our pipeline. And you can quickly build a pipeline by just adding people into your existing position from older positions and just sending out an email campaign or a video voicemail. So when I look at this, you know, again, um, on the document here, and I'm going to bring this over here, when I did, you know, my, uh, just my quick job search for customer service, Budapest Italian, and here's a customer service, Budapest German. You know, I was able to find, um, here's one with 44 profiles, that's Italian and French. Here's another one with 145 profiles um, in this particular aperture job, that's for German and Italian. Here's another one with 23 profiles, here's another one with two profiles. This is kind of sad, but I put it in there because there was, you know, two people in there. I never discount anybody, I always include everybody. Um, here's another job with 55 profiles, here's another one with uh, 22 profiles. And then for German, I had a few more other jobs. Again, these are all different jobs, all different job numbers. So these are all, you know, profiles that we could collect and put into the, the new opportunity. All right, so that's the first thing I would always do is look in jobs because, again, I mean, just here, here's German, here's 55, so that's like, what, 190. Um, or actually it's like 200, it's 200 people there. Here's Italian, oh, that's sorry, Italian. Here's German. So here's 220 profiles just like that. Again, there may be some duplicates. We definitely want to merge those duplicates because, you know, obviously we want to have a true number of, of, of folks that we're looking to, um, you know, campaign to. So again, I'm sending you this document. You don't have to jot down anything. You'll have every single one of these jobs. Um, the next thing I would do is um, do a people search. Okay, so now I'm changing jobs from jobs to people. Okay, so now I'm basically saying, Avature, 
I want you to find me everybody and I'm going to use my boolean string that I had created and let's see customer copy and this is the boolean string I had created paste so customer service or customer support Budapest German or Italian and English okay so again I wanted to focus on people that have these skill sets these keywords in their profile and if I click on search you know I have 463 results okay again some of these people may be part of those other jobs we don't know for sure if all of them are in there um, so again you know you might have to go through here and see you know would this person be a fit for the position I'm working on do they already exist do they not already exist and again you can see here um, you know Xelanese is not the only person or the only client in uh, Budapest that is looking we also have Syngenta that is looking for um, folks um, TMO um, TMO works for Flowserve so we can say that Flowserve is looking for people in this area um, if I keep on going down, I, get, I still see Syngenta, TMO, Syngenta. So, and I know, I know that you guys are going through a lot with this particular location because it is a hot location <laughs> and everyone seems to want people in Budapest. So, you know, I know that the, the uh, market is very, very tight and um, it's going to take a really great uh, employee value proposition to get people, um, you know, to, to join Selenese as well as any other company, you know, within that particular uh, geography. So again, um, you know, just by this one search, you know, we're able to find 463 people. Uh, we can also change that search up just to see if we can find and uncover any additional ones. Here's another search string that I uh, created. This just basically says I want someone that has customer representative or customer service or customer specialist or customer success or customer or coordinator customer or consultant Budapest Germany or German Italian and English and if you click search now we can see that uh, we have 873 results okay so again it's more than 463 we just added 400 more people to um, the you know potential pipeline for this particular role just by doing uh, a, a different keyword search. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a second there because that really concludes just avatar searches. So step four out of step 13. <laughs> Any questions at this point? Okay, all right. And then um, Barbara, you did ask, um, is avatar search based on LinkedIn and Monster only? No. Um, Avatar searches are based on whatever is in Avatar. So sometimes people are added in through LinkedIn, sometimes people are added through Monster, sometimes people find our jobs through um, Career We Go, which is our, um, our, our portal in which we can um, you know, advertise positions. It used to be Connexa Careers, now it's Career We Go. Um, you know, if there are folks that find our jobs on Zing, um, you know, anybody that has worked on our position, uh, worked on this area, um, are pulling people in from a variety of different portals. Um, I know Syngenta, I, I believe they have profession.hu, so there may be some folks, you know, in Avatar that are from profession.hu. Uh, there may be some folks in the um, Avatar system from other portals. So you don't really know exactly where the for, uh, folks are coming from um, you know but you can definitely figure that out you know once you actually look at the the job profile or the person profile so for instance with mm -hmm. Sylvia Lucas um, she found the position on the Conexa portal which means that she found the job on Career We Go or Conexa Careers I don't think that we went live in February with Career We Go but that's how she was able to find this job Okay, and then this one here, Marco Matucci. Um, again, source none. I don't know, you know, how he found this job, but obviously he's been kind of in the mix for quite some time. So it could have been any which way that he was able to find the job, or someone found him. Here's another one that came from Monster. Here's another one that came from Monster. Here's another one. We don't know where this person came from. Another one that no one knew where this came, person came from. Monster. So again, you can look at the source. And, the, and source is populated um, by the person that's actually entering the information into Aperture. 
and if it doesn't automatically feed over from LinkedIn or Monster, then it would need to be manually uploaded or manually identified. And if the recruiter sourcer doesn't do that, then we, we're not going to know where that source of candidate came from. Uh, Deborah, I have a question. Monster is integrated into Averture and it is uh, uh, quite easy to find uh, CVs on Monster. There is a Hungarian job board called Profession.hu. Uh, yeah. Would it be possible to integrate it to Averture? Because we can upload CVs, but you have to download the CV and then upload again, so you have to do it manually. Yeah. And it, it makes the whole process a bit slower. I know. It's, yeah, that's, that's all pain in the butt having to do that. Let me see if it's actually in settings. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look in the password manager just to see what's available and if I see profession.hu then it's already integrated. We just need to go ahead and add your account uh, details into it. If it's not mm -hmm. integrated then I can reach out to mm -hmm. um, Aperture and find out if we can go ahead and integrate it. And I don't see profession.hu no. or Zing. Yes, I don't see it integrated, um, but let me just jot that down and I can reach out to Aperture mm -hmm. if they can go ahead and integrate Profession H U Password Manager. Thank you. you it, it, would awesome. make, it, it would make uh, uh, the work much more easy. Yeah, I, think. No, I, I yeah. Totally, totally agree. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's efficient because it, Say you're doing a search on profession and you find out that the person actually already has a profile in Aperture, you know, you're going to save money by not downloading that resume mm -hmm. again because you already know that the person already mm -hmm. So yeah, it definitely would um, help out. Okay, so um, once we get through, you know, the, the 200 people <laughs> that we've already found so far um, and then, you know, 800 more, um, if for some reason we couldn't find additional folks and we need, or we need fresh blood, we can go ahead and do some searches in Aperture web sources. And then of course that, you know, you alluded that uh, to that before, uh, Susanna, that we can go ahead and do searches in Aperture, um, you know, on external job portals. So I actually have um, uh, Monster EMEA. So I'm going to go ahead and, and again, what I, what I typically do uh, with, um, web sources is I uncheck everything and I just go down the list one by one. And obviously I, I'm not going to go and, and click on Career Builder for a job in Hungary because Career Builder is not going to have resumes in Hungary. Uh, so I would skip that one. I would skip eFinancial Careers because they're not in hung Hungary as well. Uh, but then again, you know, Monster I know is in Hungary and so this is where I would actually start doing my search. And, you know, the, the same uh, keywords, you know, could definitely be used, um, you know, as I did with the Aperture search. So if I just go ahead and click in the, the string here, and then I indicate that I want to see anybody in Hungary. Let's see, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, Hungary. Add. Okay, so now I'm basically saying I want to see, you know, customer people. Um, in Hungary, I'm, what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to add the word Budapest. All right, because I, I want to be able to say, all right, I, I want to see people that are in, um, you know, specifically in Budapest. Okay, so now I have Hungary, all English, customer, Budapest. I'm going to go ahead and do a search. Oh, the other thing too is I personally like looking at all resumes. I, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're doing the search, you know, week after week or month after month, you know, you can actually go ahead and say, change it to, all right, well, I just did the search, you know, a week ago, and I looked at all the resumes, so now I only want to see last week's, you know, resumes, then, I'll, then that's when you'll actually, will click on a date modified within a week, because everything else you've already seen. But, you know, for any new search, I always include all resumes. I don't want any stone left unturned. Okay. So then I click on search here and I wait. And I see here that I have uh, a thousand resumes um, that showed up in my results. Are they all good? Probably not. Again, you know, you got to look at what actually popped up and see, you know, whether or not this, you know, these people are going to be good or not, you know, obviously this first one here, an Oracle consultant, not going to be a good fit for this position, so I'm going to pass that person up. Translator, interpreter, administrator, secretary, customer service representative, 
looks pretty decent. So, you know, again, um, and apparently Susanna Barani thought so too. <laughs> so, you know, someone actually, um, you know, in, include, in, already import, imported Susanna already. Um, and obviously, you know, it fit someone else's positions. Um, and then here, you know, again, uh, Bosch, Baloch, uh, Vodafone Shared Services, huge competitor of ours. Uh, not so much in the industry, but for customer service talent. So, you know, I know that Vodafone has a huge service center there. Um, and, you know, essentially we could be looking at the competitors there. So anyway, um, if Monster, you know, if you get through Monster and you find that there's nobody else left, um, you know, obviously you're going to go through all the other paid accounts that you have available. Um, and then um, eventually you're going to go into the free Personally, I do not like using the free searches through Avature, um, and it, it really makes no difference if you're doing the free search in Avature versus a free search outside of Avature, especially if you have the import to Avature button on your Google um, search bar, um, because you can go ahead and import any resume that you find out on the free web um, into Avature if you have this import to Avature button. So. Um, typically, I get through all of my paid searches first, and then, you know, that's when I start to go external. Um, so the next step here in my list of things to do here is I searched Avature Web Sources. Um, for those of you that have Recruitment Edge, I don't know if you have Recruitment Edge, it is a career builder tool. It does allow us to search globally for different social profiles. Um, you know, for Hungary, it's, it's not a really great viable portal, so chances are you may not have it. Um, but I did a quick search on Recruitment Edge and only found two people. Um, and actually, not, neither one of them actually fit your role. So at least I could say, you know, we looked at Recruitment Edge, had horrible results, we move on. Um, the next thing I do is I search the free LinkedIn account. Again, using the same um, keywords. So I'm going to go into LinkedIn now. So if I go into Dev Social, LinkedIn, and then I'm going to do a search. So again, keywords, I'm just going to copy this. Copy, paste, search. And by the way, LinkedIn has changed their search function time and time again. And every time I do a new search in, in, into, in LinkedIn, I'm always surprised that I can't do something that I used to do. So anyway, um, we have here, you know, here's a list of top research, uh, results. Again, I only want to look at people. So again, I'm going to click on just people because I only want to see people. And then, of course, I want to only look at people in Hungary. So I'm going to put in Hungary, Hungary area. Um, again, you know, we have a lot. I mean, there's 15,614 results. I mean, it's a crazy amount of people. Um, and again, you know, with this list, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and do, you know, some, I'm going to use maybe current companies, past companies. Maybe I'll even, you know, throw in a, a couple new keywords. Maybe I'll even just put down, you know, customer support specialist. Um, or customer service and just look for the certain, you know, titles. Um, but, you know, just doing a customer representative, service specialist, success coordinator, consultant in Budapest with German or Italian, you know, this is the amount of people that show up. Again, you probably don't want to go through 15,000 resumes or 15,000, uh, you know, profiles. So you might want to go ahead and add, you know, some other keywords here. Um, or you may want to just look at people that are, you know, that you're first connected with or second connection with. I think the only person I'm connected with um, that has anything to do with uh, customers in, in Budapest. <laughs> and uh, second, you know, uh, second um, folks that are shared connections, you know, obviously 161 people, at least with the second connections, you can say, hey, uh, you know, Gabor or Gabor, Gabor, is it Gabor or Gabor? I'm horrible with my accents here for uh, folks in, in Hungary. Um, I could say, you know, I, uh, you know, we share uh, a connection. We shared this person in in, in uh, common, and I'm interested in talking to you about a potential opportunity. You know, just let me know if you have an opportunity to chat on the telephone call. Um, so, you know, once I get through um, LinkedIn, if for some reason, you know, the profiles are awful, and we need maybe additional um, avenues. 
Um, the other tool I like to use is the Google Customer Search Engine. So I have it saved here. Google Customer Search Engine uh, allows me to do a LinkedIn search um, outside of LinkedIn, which is great. Um, and you know, again, when we did our searches in LinkedIn, we you know, remember we had like 15,000 people show up. So if I do it outside of LinkedIn, using the same exact keywords, and if I click on search, we can see that there's a lot more results that pop up. Not, not. I don't want to go through all of these, but maybe I only want to focus on people that um, have, um, you know, less than five years experience. You know, so if I click here, I only want to look at people with less than five years experience. You know, now we can go ahead and dwindle that number down, you know, to 200,000 people. Again, if the people that are coming up are not exactly what you're looking for, change the keyword. So. Let's just go ahead and do this. It's customer service. Okay. Let's just see what happens when we do this. So again, you know, if we change just the keywords, we're drastically changing. Again, let's put in English search. Okay. So now we have 91,000. Again, I only want to look at people who have years experience. All right. And so here are people that LinkedIn feels like there's less than five years experience, although I never depend on just that because obviously you can see here um, it's matching up, you know, customer service type of titles with the years of experience. And so they may actually have more than, you know, five years experience because they had more years experience outside of customer service. So don't always go by that. Um, again, you have to, you know, play with the keywords, dwindle that, that list down. Um, and if you want to just focus on people with emails in the profile, you know, click on emails and profile. Everybody here has an email listed in their profile. So definitely would help you out, you know, in terms of, well, what are some of the personal emails that I can reach out to these individuals with? Okay. So again, just play with the keywords, Google custom search engine, you know, another way to uncover uh, talent. Um, there is a, a different type of uh, tool, though, that is my favorite, and that's Recruitant.net. It's another x-ray site tool. And so if I go into my sourcing here and go on Recruitant.net, what, what's really cool about Recruitant.net is I can actually specifically focus on LinkedIn uh, profiles in specific countries. You know, So the other thing, too, is this x-ray search tool will also search uh, Dribbble, Google+, GitHub, Zing, and Stack Overflow, as well as Twitter. So, you know, this is a really great tool because you can actually search multiple search engines um, and databases without actually having to even create a, um, an extra uh, string. So for um, this tool, again, you know, I'm going to put down that I want to see uh, people in Hungary, um, for you put in a customer, uh, you put in a title. So if you want to put in uh, customer service um, and then keywords, um, you know, we want to put in German um, or Italian and English. Oops, English. And um, again, you know, I know with this particular role, we wanted a degree. So we're going to put down, we want to see people with um, a job title of customer service um, in Hungary with uh, keywords German or Italian and English. And we want these people to be degreed. So we click on find the right people. And it automatically creates a Boolean string for you. All you have to do is click on open in Google. And here's 48,700 results of people that came back um, in LinkedIn um, that meet those, that, that criteria, okay? Again, you know, you can dwindle down this list a lot more if the more um, information you put into the, into the tool. Um, so again, I really like Recruiting.net because again, it, you know, it only focuses on people in um, Hungary. Um, you could do this in any other country. I've done this in South Africa. Um, I've used this tool in China and Japan. Um, again, that it, it gets a little bit more dicey when you're working in a country in which you know the the language is in in um, you know an alphabet that you truly understand. So, you know, with China and Japan, I'm having to put in symbols that I have absolutely no idea what the results are, but it does help. Um, you know, and, and if you're working in multiple countries uh, with multiple different languages being spoken, this will definitely help. 
Um, any questions on Recruiting.net or X-Ring? Okay. Um, so again, we're only at step seven. <laughs> we have still more to go. Um, the one thing I did want to mention to you is that, unfortunately, um, LinkedIn had made some privacy changes and has eliminated a lot of really cool Chrome extensions that used to work uh, with, link, with LinkedIn to uncover uh, personal emails or contact information or personal emails and contact information, telephone numbers, um, so forth and so on. They've made such changes that a lot of them are not working. The ones that do still work um, are uh, Connectifier, uh, Contact Out, and um, 360 Social, um, and Lucia. Lucia. Lucia is another um, site that allows you to uncover contact information. It's hit and miss. Um, it's it's been very difficult to uncover, you know, contact information. What I've been telling folks is, you know, use your emails um, if they are on LinkedIn. If they're not on LinkedIn, you know, do a Google search on the company and see if you can find a name convention for the emails that do exist that you can uncover. Um, and then, you know, try those different email, uh, different naming conventions. And, and then, you know, when all else fails, you have a, you know, a company directory. Um, you can call into the main headquarters of the phone uh, of that particular company and just put in the first three letters of the last name or the first, you know, four letters. And, or you could just, um, you know, you could just ask the, you know, the secretary or the operator to transfer you to the person that you need to talk to. Um, so there's a variety of different ways that you can connect with a person. I wish I could say that it's, you know, it's, it's been great and easy, but it, it has been more difficult, unfortunately, to uncover personal contact information through um, some of the tools that were available to us in the past. Um, step eight, again, you know, using uh, Google to do, using our Boolean on Google, um, and I like doing uh, in URL searches as well as in title searches. Um, so if I just, you know, if I take this Boolean phrase here, copy, and I go into Google, and I throw that phrase in here, I'm basically saying to Google, I want you to find me any um, anything that comes back with um, resume in the URL, you know, some people go ahead and title their resume, online resume, with a resume word. Uh, customer, representative, service, specialist, you know, same, the same string that I was using all the way through this um, training. Um, the one thing that I definitely don't want to see in my search results are, you know, anything that says sample or job or jobs, because I really, really want to focus on resumes. I'm not, I don't want to focus on the actual jobs that people are um, advertising. So, you know, if you go through here, you might be able to find some, you know, additional resumes. Um, you know, here's a Robert Young resume. Um, you know, again, it's on SlideShare. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but you might be able to find, you know, just some resumes, here's another one, a resume that's on Google. Um, you know, so again, you just, just go through, you know, some of the search results. Um, and again, you can play around with, you know, the, the, the keywords and uh, make sure that it's, you know, something that, you know, will work for you. Um, you know, and then again, I, I included in URL Vitae because sometimes people, you know, title their CV curriculum Vitae. Sometimes they uh, title it, you know, resume or CV. So hold on one second here. Um, uh, I'm training. Okay. Um, so step nine is um, this is where we get a little bit more interesting. So searching associations and organizations through X-raying is really helpful. Um, you know, I probably can do a little bit more work on this for you. Um, I uh, wasn't able to find too many, um, uh, you know, too many organizations and associations that focus on, uh, you know, German speakers. And, and most of the organizations that I was able to find online lead to some sort of Facebook site. So, you know, like the International Women's Club, um, you know, did have multiple language um, availability for the folks that were actually part of this club. Um, but again, you know, uh, it does link to Facebook. It seemed like Facebook was probably the more vocal area 
um, you know, a little bit more content in there. And again, what's really cool about, you know, the Facebook site, if I go in there, and you can do this with any kind of site, site as well. So if I go into International Women's uh, Club of Budapest, um, one of the things I like to do is you, I go into events and um, I can see all of the events that they um, hosted. So if I go into, you know, uh, Summer Welcome Coffee and I'm looking for people, you know, say I'm looking for women in Budapest, um, you know, to reach out to, um, you know, I can see who actually went and who was interested and here are some individuals. You could do this with any kind of language club as well. All right, so here are people that went to that particular um, meet and greet and here were people that were interested in it. Um, again, uh, where is it here? So here's, this was pretty cool too. Uh, German speaking jobs in, in Budapest. If I click on here, um, I was able to find all the members of this German speaking jobs in Budapest. So these are all people. I mean, yeah, you're going to find some recruiters in here. Here's another recruiter coordinator. Um, but you may actually also find some members of this group that are just looking for a job um, because they speak German and they live in Budapest. So if, that's one of the things you want to definitely look for are public groups. Um, that are, you know, people that are speaking German or speaking Italian in Budapest and, and then obviously look at the members and that will be another way to uncover some additional uh, talent for you. And let me go back over here. Um, there was, a, you know, again, this is where I would actually start to look for um, members or student alumni. So, you know, just find the sites and then you can do a site search or just look for the members you can look for a directory you can look for a list alumni community um, sometimes you get lucky sometimes you, you know it, you're not as lucky but um, you know looking at associations and organizations x-raying them to see if they have a members list is sometimes very helpful and you can maybe uncover uh, you know additional talent that way um, again, you know, just like rec with Recruiting.net, you know, you can do a search in Twitter, um, you know, both in Recruiting.net, but also with FollowerWonk. FollowerWonk is a, a tool that you can go ahead and search for profiles in Twitter. Um, I did the search here for customer service. I didn't find a lot going on. Um, let me see here, search bios. And if I click in here, customer service, you know, Budapest, I don't think I had anything that came up. But it's, it's this easy. You can actually log, log into the tool using your Twitter uh, feed. Um, you know, 15 results. Again, these are just uh, bios that have customer service in Budapest. Sometimes, though, you might be able to find people that are following that uh, particular account that are customer service oriented. Um, once you get through Twitter, then I would search Facebook. Again, you know, like I mentioned earlier before, um, you know, for Facebook, you know, while it's a very personal tool, you can still uncover some really cool um, talent within the tool. Um, so, you know, one of the things I like to do is I have this one site here called uh, IntelliTechniques. Uh, IntelliTechniques and HireTool are two different platforms that you can go ahead and do some searches in Facebook. It's obviously not a very pretty page, but it's effective. So if I go into you know, this area over here, I want to see current people with the word customer service. And I want to see people that, let's see, current location is Budapest. Okay. Um, I can click a search here. Again, you have to be logged into your Facebook account to get the results. But here are all people that live in Budapest that have customer service as their title. Okay, so um, this is another great way to uncover names that may not be in LinkedIn. Again, you can do the, you can add them as a friend. You can try to reaching out to them, you know, this way. You can, um, you know, try to find them on, uh, try to find, a, you know, their personal contact through Google. And then again, if, if you don't want to go through that many people and you want to, oops, sorry, hold on, let me go back here. And you want to go ahead and look at specific languages spoken. Then you can say, all right, well, I want, I want people that can speak. Let's do Italian search. Okay, so now these are all people that have customer service in their title. They live in Budapest and they speak Italian, all right, or at least they claim to speak Italian. Same thing with, you know, change Italian to German. 
search. And here are all people that say they speak German in, in their customer service position in Budapest. So again, you know, it's, it, this is, it's a really cool tool, this IntelliTechniques, um, very easy to use, and the results, you know, typically come back with some pretty impressive results. Um, uh, finally, search, uh, or I shouldn't say finally, step 12. We're on 12, and I, I'm so sorry for going over, uh, but I have two more steps to go, so hang in there, and then we'll be all done here. Um, the other thing I like to do is search user groups, meetups, LinkedIn groups, conference websites. I'm sure you guys all belong to groups on LinkedIn. I'm not going to go through that. Meetup is pretty cool, though. So um, I did a search on just language exchange events, and I was able to find this one place. It's, it's a one meetup in Budapest. Um, it's the Budapest Language Exchange. It's the German meetup. Um, and what's really cool is you can see all the people that are going to this German meetup. Okay, so if you join Meetup, um, you can actually connect with all these individuals and say, hey, I see that you were, you know, meeting up at, at you know, this event, you know, in Budapest, um, you know, not sure, you know, uh, what your background is. You can kind of stalk them on Facebook first or LinkedIn and see if they fit your, you know, your role. But, you know, here's another way to find people that, you know, um, you know are going to a German meetup in Budapest. So you can do that with Italian, you could do that with French. Um, and, you know, again, it's just another way to uncover some additional folks. Um, here's, oh, so yeah, I, I was able to, it's the same thing, but um, I also did a search on just the members of this Budapest language and friends. And so there's 4,098 people um, that belong to this meetup called Budapest Language Exchange and Friends. Again, I don't know whether or not they actually speak the, the languages that you're looking for, but again, you know, these are, these are 4,000 members in the Budapest area that have um, probably some sort of interest in language, um, you know, uh, languages. They're all polyglots, so they speak multiple languages. Um, finally, um, search, uh, step 13, searching video and presentation slide, site, sites. Ugh. Um, Slideshare.net is a really cool tool. Um, it provides the... Um, the researcher presentations um, that they can go ahead and, and, and um, you know, review or they can watch. Um, they're, you know, PowerPoint presentations that are available to you for free. Uh, but sometimes on SlideShare, you can actually find uh, CVs. So what I did here is, once again, I did a, a quick, um, a quick uh, x-ray. So I copied this and I threw this into my search bar here for Google. And I'm basically saying, I want you to search slideshare.net for customer service, English, Italian, German, Budapest, CV. So I click on enter here. I have 93 results. Um, CV, Dora, Vizvari. Um, again, you know, she may be a good customer service person. She may not, again, but it's just trying to uncover additional talent through multiple means. Um, but um, that's basically the 13 steps right there. And I'll definitely send this out to you. Um, yeah, that we don't have anything else other than this. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I know I went through a lot of information and I apologize for going four minutes over. Any questions? Did you guys find this useful? Thank you, thank you. Awesome, great. I'm glad it was of use. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll make sure that this is um, put into a YouTube video. So if you want to go ahead and watch it again, um, you can definitely do that. You can share this with folks on your team. And um, I will send you the 13 steps. I'll send you this Stump the Sourcer training um, so you can actually have all the links to make you guys successful. Again, if you need me to like look for and uncover some additional talent through universities or some of the associations, I'll uh, I'll see if I can uncover some member list and, and, and directories for you. But uh, this should at least make you dangerous. <laughs> so, again, thank you so much for your attention. Um, again, I'm here if you have any other questions. Otherwise, we will go ahead and um, stop the presentation. So, thank you so much for attending.